the destruction was just heartbreaking. You know, this is my home. I got hit. I got hit. A riot in the streets of Portland. Our own reporters caught in the middle as police break it up. Now the police chief is asking for peaceful protesters to take the night off. We don't want the criminal element to use the protesters as as a way to embed themselves in to commit crimes. We don't want the protesters, if you will, to get hijacked by criminals. We have team coverage tonight as businesses work to repair the widespread damage hoping there isn't a repeat of last night. This is Coin 6 News at 4 o'clock, everybody. I'm Jennifer Hoff. And I'm Dan Tilkin. Right now, a lot of people in the city are on, ed are on edge, knowing pro more protests are set for tonight. And again, we do have team coverage with what the city is doing to keep you safe if those rioters go back out. We will begin with our Lisa Balick, who just got done speaking with city leaders. Lisa? Yes, the police chief and the mayor were here just a few hours ago, and they say the damage from last night is more than a million dollars. And if protesters come out again tonight, you can expect to see the police step in a lot sooner. Now, the mayor said he knows a lot of people are scared, hurt, and angry after what happened in the city last night about the peaceful protest that turned ugly. The police chief called it a tragedy. Both say citizens have the right to express their First Amendment rights, but after the protest turned violent and police shut down the freeways, as protesters swarmed onto them, expect different police response tonight. My goal not to have the amount of vandalism and, frankly, rampant criminal activity we had last night. That's just... Uh, it would be my desire to keep them off the freeways, yes. Is that part of the plan? That would probably be part of the plan. Some anarchists who hijacked that event and did terrible damage to our neighbors and friends. That's a crime and it is unacceptable. Now, the police chief says protesters will need a permit to march tonight. He and the mayor are encouraging groups to stay home or not march, at least for tonight. Some groups say they will honor that request and hold a rally here at City Hall instead. The mayor is encouraging, though, still the public to come downtown, to go to games, to go to restaurants, to go to shows, and not be afraid. But clearly, both are not exactly sure what's going to happen here tonight, if they'll see the violence that they saw last night. But again, police say they will step in a lot sooner to deal with it. Live in downtown Portland. And Lisa Balick, Coin 6 News. And we'll certainly be keeping an eye on it as the evening progresses. Lisa, thank you. We did hear from the Oregon Republican Party today calling for Charlie Hales to resign for dereliction of duty. In a statement, the chairman, Bill Courier, says in part, a crisis situation exists in Portland right now. Hales has proven himself incapable of dealing properly with this protest as he's done previously. It is vital that Portland City Council take its responsibility to the safety of Portland residents seriously. End quote. We asked the mayor for his response to this, and he has said, no comment. Uh, now we have a look at the 25 people arrested during the riots in downtown Portland. Most of these folks are facing charges like disorderly conduct, interfering with a, pe a peace officer and riot. They range in age from 15 to 48. We looked into who some of these people are. We found out some are Portland State students. One man told us he was caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. And after that mayhem last night that went into the morning, as we've mentioned, there is a rally expected tonight. However, organizers say it will not be a march on the streets. Our Cole Miller is live at City Hall with the details. Well, Dan, Jennifer, good afternoon. That's what we're told. But if last night was any indication, you really can't rule anything out. Now, that event is set to take place here at City Hall. Now, the way this event reads on Facebook, at least, at least 1,000 people have said they'll be here for a vigil. And by now, you've seen those images and the scenes from the streets last night and this morning, that anti-Trump protest descending into a riot. Tonight, Portland Resistance is planning that vigil, but there's no mention of this being an anti-Trump type of gathering. Rather, action they want to see in Portland in regards to rent control, police brutality, transparency in city government, increased mental health funding, really all types of things. So this, again, is set to begin in about an hour. We'll be down here covering it at City Hall. Organizers adamant, telling people that this will not pour into the streets. We'll, of course, be keeping an eye on that. Live in downtown Portland, Cole Miller, Coin 6 News. Hey Cole, some people may know that you got shot last night with a rubber bullet. You're doing okay though, right? 
Yeah, Dan, doing doing good. We got hit, uh, at least myself, I got hit in the back, the arm and the leg. Uh, many others around me going down, injured from some of those rubber projectiles, those riot control agents, as Portland police call them. All right, it's a tough job, but you did a good job. Thank yeah. you. Also tonight, Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley stopped by Coin6 News this morning to talk about the election and, of course, the riots. Our Ken Body sat down with him, and Merkley said he hopes that uh, any more protests that happen stay peaceful. Hopefully, uh, the, the, we will not see a return of these anarchists uh, who came out to destroy uh, what was a very peaceful demonstration. They're really taking away the, the value of thousands of Portlanders uh, who wanted to convey their concerns about some of the messages of this, of this campaign. Merkley went on to say last night's violence hurts the people who came out to protest peacefully. You can watch his entire interview right now on coin.com. Oregon Governor Kate Brown sent us a statement. She says, Oregon has a proud and strong history of civic participation, protests, and advocacy. It's part of the Oregon way to make our voices heard, but the right to peacefully assemble should not be clouded by attempts to instigate lawlessness. And as you've seen in some of the video, dozens of businesses have had their windows broken cars, damaged buildings, spray painted. All of this could be about a million dollars. Right. It spread from the Pearl District to downtown to southeast Portland. Emily Sinovic is live in the Pearl District where dozens spent the day cleaning up. Yeah, the damage is pretty bad here. Take a look at this boarded up business here. It's not just this one. From the corner that I'm standing on right now, there are a half dozen businesses that look just like this. And this is just the visible damage. We heard from others who say the damage goes far beyond a few busted windows. We actually met with a truck driver with a small local business, and he tells me the riots, the violence, and the mass marches closing the highways and city streets is costing him hundreds of dollars in canceled or delayed deliveries every day. And never knowing if the riots will kick up again and shut down the highways again means losing even more money tomorrow and the next day. But the uncertainty means that loads cancel, so the revenue can add up to thousands and thousands of dollars very, very quickly that, that, that a small business like ours can't afford to lose. Because Portland Highways, you don't know if they're We don't know if they're open or closed, and you can't take the chance that you're going to get stuck in it and put a driver honestly, their life at risk, right, with some of the lawlessness that we're seeing. So businesses here in Northwest did get help from volunteers cleaning up today, but it could be a few days before some can secure that broken glass and then reopen. Now, coming up on Coin 6 News at 5, we'll take a look at how some protesters are actually trying to raise money to help businesses repair all of this damage. Reporting live, I'm Emily Sinovic, Coin 6 News. Thank you, Emily, and stay with Coin 6 for much more on the riots.